Hey, welcome back. My name is Alan. This is the ZBrush 101 series. Today, we're going to talk about customization. So this is one of those amazing features about ZBrush that a lot of software, they just can't even compete to the level of customization within, within ZBrush. Now, here's a warning. Any time you change ZBrush UI around any of the hotkeys, any future tutorials, be it my tutorials or otherwise, right, you're not going to be able to follow along exactly. But what you gain is speed. Okay, so the very first thing that we're going to do is just kind of get rid of things that I personally think you'll never use. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to preferences, config, and we need to click enable customize. So you'll notice that the whole screen kind of shifts a little bit. We would like that to be on. And what that allows us to do is get rid of some of this extra stuff. So this zoom is not the same thing as zoom 3D. This is like zooming in and out to my object. And this one is zooming in and out to my canvas, which is why things can look very blocky when you do that. There's no point of this. Just you, you don't even need it. So we're gonna get rid of that. When you have enable customize, you're gonna press control and alt and you're just going to drag whatever you don't want right into your your document here right here in the middle that one's gone don't need that or that or that uh we're going to keep bpr for now ultimately we're going to get rid of the camera i like to keep those things i never use rotate zoom move like this or frame i press f you know i'm using my right click and alt and control to move manipulate i don't need these things inside a zbrush i don't use transparency very often ghost hardly ever then i can hold control and alt and scooch these things up give myself a little more space a little more organized if i want to i'm going to keep these here currently Currently. that stuff looks good i don't use replay last or adjust last so that gives me a little more space up here i don't use that either i'm gonna scooch the points over so we've cleared up quite a bit of space so far i just sculpt so i rarely use color we're just gonna keep all this stuff here for now that all looks good you really don't need the home page button which would give you room to scooch things over if you want to and that's that's good enough for now it's a little less cluttered one of the things i want you to remember is your ui should not look like my ui your UI should be totally set up specifically for you. Now, you might take some things that I do with mine and you might like it, but don't copy my UI. Don't copy somebody else's UI. Take bits and pieces from here and there and then use what works for you. So just think back to your previous sculpts, your previous endeavors inside of ZBrush and think about what did you use the most? What buttons did you click the most? Were you spending a ton of time going into sub tools and then split and then split to parts like we can drag these buttons and put them where we want if you need that so for example geometry i use z remesher often so i i'm still in enable customize i'm under z remesher i could put a z remesher button right here so i'm gonna hold control and alt left click and drag and this isn't actually moving it stays there but now i have a z remesher button that I could put if I want. Now it's handy to have the target polygon count there as well. So actually, now would be a good time for me to scooch things down. So I'm gonna scooch everything down, roll and alt. You'll notice that it, it snaps pretty easily. Take your time with this. If you screw up, don't worry about it. Just close ZBrush out. You haven't saved anything. Anyways, we can get back to our default settings if we need to. There we go. That gives me the ability to scooch Z Remesher over. Gives me enough that I can just throw that right up there. Anything, you can just move them around. Let's do some brushes. Let's go ahead and since I can't click this, we're going to go to Lightbox. Let's open up a Dynamesh sphere. We're still in Enable Customize. That's going to allow me to pick my brushes. So here's Clay Buildup, for example. Clay Buildup is selected. And then under Brush, I can actually grab this from here. If I press Control and Alt from here, you'll notice it switched because I'm holding Control to Masking. So I'm going to select Clay Buildup, go to Brush, and then there is my Clay Buildup brush. Control Alt, and I'm going to slap this down here. That's awesome. Let's go grab the damn standard brush, go up the brush, roll alt damn standard. Maybe these are my, you know, cutting brushes, cutting in. You can do this as much as you want, as much as you need. Here, let's change the color in case you would like to do that. We're going to go to preferences, eye colors, and then I think it's SW2. We are going to left click and drag, and then we get this color picker. So I'm holding left click and I can come over here and then pick uh, whatever color I want right around here. I find it helpful to, before we do that, just go ahead and pick a color here. That way we get this big, nice, easy to use gradient. Like let's do, I don't know, ink-ish. Preferences, SW2, left click and drag. And now I can go pick which pink that I want right here. Maybe I want something like that. That's all good. So several things we've done. We've gotten rid of buttons that we don't need or don't think we'll need. We've added different buttons around. We've shifted this whole thing over. We added Z Remesher. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and save this. Under preferences. 
is config and we can say store configuration, control shift I. It says blah, 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 it's successfully saved. That means the next time you open up ZBrush, this is gonna open up. Another thing that I change, uh, let's go ahead and turn off enable customize and this would be what you would see next time you open it. I like to change the startup material. So let's go ahead and pick a material that you really like. I mean, I'm just gonna use basic material. And then at the bottom, I can say save as startup material, blah, blah, blah. Next time you launch, this is the material uh, that it will be using. So let's discuss a pop-up menu. First thing we're gonna do is double click. This allows this, this little side dock. You can actually have a whole set of different things over here. You can just double click that little arrow. Same thing at the bottom. You can click this, have some more space in this little shelf, like a drawer opening up. We're gonna open that up. Once again, preferences, enable customize. And then we're gonna go to custom UI and we're gonna say, hey, let's create a new menu. We're gonna call this Al test, whatever, press enter. And then you'll notice at the top that I have Al test. Okay, so once I have Al I'll test open, I can, you know, find that little almost power looking button, left click and drag it over here. I've got this little menu up here. Next up, we're gonna go to preferences, custom UI, custom sub palette. I'm gonna press alt and control to actually drag this into Al test. Now this gives me the ability to drag and drop different buttons, whatever I want into this little section. Let's say I really hated projecting details cause you have to Go to sub tool, down to project. You're gonna project your history and then you go back to geometry. So maybe I just wanna speed that up. I'm gonna take project history, control alt, drag right up here. Now I have a project history button. Let's do a, we're just gonna keep all of that. I might as well do PA blur cause I always like turning that down. That's good. And then let's add a geometry divide button. That's also gonna be right up in here. I've divide, project history. I can turn that blur down if I want. Modify topology is a good one because I hate going to modify topology, mirror and weld. So we'll just throw mirror and weld right up in there down a little bit. You can readjust these. Okay, things are looking great. I'm going to go to preferences, turn off, enable customize, control shift I to save everything. But now we want to make this a hotkey. So since enable customize is off, we'll get rid of that. That was just to help me because it's all right there. I'm going to press control alt click, press any combination uh, keys to assign a hotkey. So I'm going to press X for me. I press X. It says, Ooh, sorry. It's already blah, blah, blah. Press okay to assign this. I'm fine with that. X typically will turn on and off this X symmetry. But now since I've done that, I get this little thing that pops up anytime I need it. So one thing that I forgot to mention is storing the hotkeys. So under preferences, hotkeys, we're just gonna say store. And that will keep that pop-up menu good to go. Everything is great with the world. So let's put this into practice. Let's say I'm doing my character. I'm used lots of Sculptures Pro on this thing. So my geometry is not good and things start to lag or whatever. And I'm ready to project my details. So in the past, we'd have to go to geometry, the remesher, we would Z remesh, okay, nothing too crazy there. I then hold control and click to go back in time in my undo history. Let's go up to sub tool, down to EA blur, turn that off, I don't need color, project history. And then I have to bounce to geometry, press divide, and then back to sub tool, press project history. So I know it doesn't seem like a lot of clicks when you do this over and over and over and over again. It's so annoying to just like collapse the sub tool, go to geometry, even the motion of coming up here down to project history or scrolling up and down to get there. It's a pain. So we're going to do that same thing, except maybe a little quicker because we've got our handy dandy custom UI. Okay, I've done my sculpting on this. I'm ready to project my project my details. So I'm going to press Z remesher because I have a button there. That was nice. That is awesome. Control click. Let's go forward in time again. I have that uh, little pop-up menu so I can press X and I'm going to say project history. I can also press X, divide, project history, divide, project history. So you'll see that I was able to do all of that basically just right here from my menu. Um, so super powerful, super awesome. Um, but you really need to find what works for you. What works for me won't work for you. If you ever want to get back to just normal UI, you're going to go up to preferences. You can restore standard UI. Now everything is back to normal. Okay. So this is my custom UI. It's nothing fancy. It's honestly very, very light compared to some uh, ZBrush artists that you'll see out there. They just have, it looks insane, just crazy everything. This has been, you know, a work in progress for me. So for me, I have active, activate symmetry up here. It's nice to just visually see that. That way I don't accidentally have 
symmetry off. So that's nice. I have back face masking. That's great to turn on. I render in Keyshot all the time. So I put that little Keyshot button there. Most of this stuff I got rid of, like I showed you before. I've got my commonly used brushes down here, clay buildup, snake hook, you know, move topological, Shane Olson's pinch brush, a tooth brush, a toothbrush, that's funny, that I made, you know, just some other things that I use time and time and time again. I get rid of color. I mean, if I ever need it, I can go up to color and then do whatever I want up there. It's just nice that to be out of the way. And then when I press X, I do need to make some changes to this. This is what I do. I've got Dynamesh here, split unmask. I like all my splitting things to be right there. So my hotkey is X, like I've said, Dynamesh stuff. I've got all my Z remesh stuff here. The tech edges is important when I'm doing hard surface and keep groups. So I like having that there, mirror and weld, and then hide points and delete hidden. That's always nice. So I can mask something i can press x i can hide points i can delete hidden if that's what i want i can then also do a dynamesh command if it weren't on already the dynamesh things that one's nice because we have to go to visibility hide points and then we have to go to geometry modify topology delete hidden it's always a work in progress it's always evolving always changing have fun with it hopefully this will help you speed up your workflow